Good evening everyone. It's Sunday and I hope you had a nice weekend. Okay, here we go with the second week online teaching. Uh, for tomorrow, Monday, okay, because this is Sunday, I'm recording this on a Sunday. This is going to be the lesson for tomorrow, Monday, March 30th. The topic that we're doing is solving quadratic equations using four methods. This is all the methods that we have learned, you know, and how to solve quadratic equations. So the first method that we learned it was factoring, all right? When we did, you know, double bubble, zero equal to zero, okay, we did the T-chart. Then we did uh, something called the square root method, you know, when you have incomplete um, quadratics. So if you have any complete quadratics, you can use the square root method. We also did completing the square and quadratic formula. Okay, those are the four methods that we have learned so far on how to solve quadratics. As the warm up, I have asked you guys, or I should have asked you in class, to take a look of each of the following, okay, quadratics, and just pick the best method, right, that you think it will be the easiest, right, to solve each problem. Okay, you have to pick one of the fourth. So we're gonna start up with the first three, okay? I already got it for you, okay? So here, if you notice, for the first one, my best method should be factoring. Remember like I told you in class, the quadratic formula, okay? Quadratic formula can help you to solve any type of a quadratic okay it doesn't matter if it's only one turn two turns three turns it doesn't matter if it's a um, standard form or if it's missing a, uh, a term the quadratic formula works for everything so this formula okay works for everything now the only thing is you have to be careful you have to use the method you know that they specify in a given question if they tell you to use completing the square if you could do it the other way, you have to do a complete in the square. If they ask you to do quadratic formula, you have to do a quadratic formula. So remember, just focus in what's being asked. So here, for to do now, the only thing I wanted to tell you, I want to show you how to identify which is the best method. So you take a look at the first one. Although we have a term on the right side of the equation, what you have to do is just set it equal to zero. Because your first goal is to try to factor, right? That's the easiest method. And if you know that, if you travel the 24 to the other side and you add it to the negative 15, you will have negative 24. And you can see that this is easy to factor. So you can use the first method, which is factoring method, because it's easily factorable. Okay? That means easily factorable. Now, how will you solve that? We're going to do that after. And you're going to see how is why that is the easiest method. Okay? Because the only thing I'm asking you is to pick which method will be easier. Now, the next two, I put it next to each other because you know that, that should be a hint. These both can be solved by the square root method, okay? Remember, you can put it equal to zero if you want. You can use the quadratic formula, you can use factor, you can try factoring first, you know, like the standard form. But if you know from, you know, from the Kego, you know, like that, this is the best method, so use that. How am I know that? Because look, it's an incomplete quadratic, okay? It's missing the middle term, you know, middle term missing, okay? And also, x squared is equals to a number. So when you have something like that, an equation that it says x squared equals to a number, might as well you use the square root method. We're gonna do these problems again using those methods, right? I'm just telling you how to pick the best one. Now, let's take a look of the next one okay we have d and e let's do e first so the first thing you have to do is you have to set it up equal to zero to see if you can factor it all right but as you go along you're going to see that you can not be factored because the only way you can get four all right is multiplying four times one that's the only reason you can get the value of c four times one will give you four but you have two options if you add those numbers 
And if you subtract it, you will give a different B value, okay? So remember that the B is the sum of, the, um, of those two factors, all right? So four minus one will be three, and four plus one will be five. So there's no way you're gonna get four in the middle. So that means it can be factored using factoring method. So I guess because I've already given it to you with the constant on the right side, the best easy one is completing the square. So for D, we're gonna use completing the square. Now remember what I said before, you can also use the quadratic formula. But since already the four is on that side, you know what, might as well let me just use completing the square. Okay, so let's go with E. E should be easier because E, you can see that the value of A, okay, remember that's A, that's B, and that's C. The value of A here is not one, okay? So when you have a number, leading coefficient that is not one, remember you have two actions. In class, we did the AC. Remember, I'm doing AC is the same thing as factoring. But be careful because sometimes the AC doesn't work, okay? So, uh, I think the best shot here is to use quadratic formula. So, for this one, we're going to use the quadratic formula. Listen, on the homework, you're going to do the same thing, okay? You're going to pick the one that you think is, is better. Now, if you're going to use the product formula for everything, that will be your choice, all right? So, we know that for that, we're going to use the product formula. So, let's take a look at the next two okay the next two all right bear with me the next two that i have is going to be also for this one you can use completing the square or you can use the quadratic formula but you know what the quadratic formula is better to use it when the value of a is not one, like in this situation here, because here the value of one is two, it's better off, I'm better off using quadratic formula, but you can use quadratic for both of them. But to me, okay, I will do completing the square or either one. Now, remember, be careful, because if you, if can, you can factor this one also, like, you know, like the one uh, uh, up here, because the factor for 15, you have one times 15, that will give you 15. But 15 minus one is 14, and 15 plus one is 16. Remember that you have two options, add or subtract. You want that to be six. The other two factors are five times three, all right? But five plus three is eight, and five minus three is two. So this problem cannot be factored using factorization, okay? So the only way you can do it is either completing the square or quadratic formula, okay? I'm gonna use completing the square when I go, you know, like down the road. And like I said before, this one, okay? This one, I write to use the quadratic formula. Why? Because my leading coefficient is not one, okay? If you notice here, the value of A is two, the value of B is three, and C is supposed to be negative four. But even though, look, if I put it equal to zero, you know, I still have to put it equal to zero to solve, uh, to use the quadratic formula, okay? Because that has to be in a standard form. Now, if you wanna use, that's what I wrote here, be careful. What did I say, be careful? Because although in this one, my AC works, in this one, it won't work. So that's why, you know, sometimes I'm a little um, tricky with the AC because the only way, if you multiply two times four, you will get eight. There's no way you're gonna, cut, you're gonna find two factors of eight that when you subtract, it will give you three or when you add, them will give you three. So here, your only option is quadratic formula, okay? So that's supposed to be you do now. I know it was kind of hard, but uh, it will make easy, it will make life easy to you, okay, if you know how to identify which method is the most appropriate. Let me have a sip of my tea because I'm having a cup of tea. Mm. Okay, so now that finish, I'll do now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve either one of those problems using the method that we pick. The method that we think is the best, all right? And if we remember in the beginning, all right, we say that the first problem, the method, the best method will be factorization, just factoring, all right? And how does that work? Okay, everybody know how to do that. You have to set the equation equal to zero. So the nines must come to this side, okay? And when you do that, you have x squared plus two x minus 24 
equals zero. Now, when we factor, we do the set of parentheses, right? And remember, because the last one is negative, we need opposite signs. So one plus, one minus, x for me, x for you. And two factors are 24, that when you subtract them, will give you two, because remember, when when that's uh, when you have different signs, you subtract, you don't add. You only add when you have same signs. So that means six times four is 24. But because the middle term is positive, so the larger number has to be positive. So six goes here, four goes there, all right? Equal zero. And everybody knows T chart, okay? So we set each parenthesis equal to zero. And we solve minus six, minus six, so my first root is negative six. I'm sorry, negative six plus four plus four. So my second root is four. So my roots are negative six and positive four. Two real rational roots. Okay, that's with the first uh, method that we learned. Then we did something that is called incomplete uh, quadratic. Okay, so incomplete quadratic. If you notice here. They only giving me the quadratic term. I don't have the linear term here and I don't have the constant. So obviously, if I'm giving you x squared equals 100, the only thing you have to do is square root in both sides, okay? Remember, the only thing is when you have a square root, when you um, evaluate, you put plus minus 10, okay? So your root will be negative 10, positive 10. Okay, remember, every incomplete quadratic if you're missing the middle term, the linear term, you can use a um, square root method. Next, next one, okay, what you do is, what we're supposed to do is, okay, solve for x. So remember, the radical kill the exponent, so I'm gonna square root both sides, and that will take care of the radicals, and I have three x plus one equals plus minus positive four, right? Then I do minus one, minus one, okay? And I'll have three X in this side equals this negative one plus minus positive four. And my last step, divide by three, divide by three, and at the end, I will have negative one plus minus four over three. Now what I have to do? I have to find my roots, all right? So to find the roots, I'm just gonna split them negative one plus four divided by three, negative one minus four divided by three. And when I solve for that, I get negative one plus four is positive three, three divided by three is one. Negative one minus four is negative five, divided by three, negative five over three. So these are U roots. Negative five third comma one, okay? So, we got done with the first three, we have four to go, so let's turn the page back. Now remember, this is problem D, and I believe we, or I say that I'm gonna use completing the square because the four is already isolated. So remember, when we already have the four, I mean not isolated, but the constant is on the right hand side. So remember, we have to add this little formula, right? B over two, square so b here is negative four so b becomes negative four divided by two square and that will give me two because negative four divided by two is negative two and negative two square is positive four so what am i going to do i have to add that four in both sides of the equation so here since i have x squared minus four x plus four that's the value from there equals four plus four from here, and I will have a perfect square trinomial, okay? So remember guys, when we have a perfect square trinomial, we always keep the variable x, we bring down the sign, and we just divide that number by two. Four divided by two is two, if I square that, and four plus four is eight, okay? Now, what am I gonna do now? square root both sides to kill the exponent, and I will have x minus two equals plus minus radical eight. Next step, plus two, plus two, all right? And I'm gonna continue here, okay? So, 
uh, when I have so far 2 plus minus radical a remember guys 99% of the cases they're gonna ask you to simplify okay in simplest radical form so to simplify the eighth right simplify what do we do? We find the larger perfect square, divide the number. In this case, is 4 and 2. 4 is a perfect square, so it's 2 radical 2. So now this 8 becomes that. So x equals 2 plus minus 2 radical 2. And there's your root. This is correct, you know, but sometimes they also write it to you separate. All right? So we're done with D. Okay, so so far I think guys you should be doing fine. This is like like um, wrapping up all method that we have done so far. Now for E, we say we're gonna use the quadratic formula, which is, I think is the easiest, all right? So it's already set equal to zero. That's my value of A, that's my value of B, and that's my value of C. If you do AC on this one, in this one the AC will work. But listen, since you already know that this um, it's going to cause you trouble, so might as well just use the quadratic formula, all right? Which I wrote it for you here. x equals minus b plus minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c, everything divided by 2 times a. So I have my values already, I identify my, val my values. So I'm just going to substitute x equals minus from the formula in parentheses, negative 16 because b is negative plus minus, okay? Remember, in parentheses, because it's negative, if I don't put in parentheses, I might get the wrong answer. Minus four times six times 10, everything divided by two times six, because my value of it is six, it's not one. So, we continue solving, all right? So, here comes my little arrow. So, x equals 16 plus minus six, negative 16 squared is 256 minus 4 times 6 times 10 will give you 240 divided by 12. So, so far I have x equals 16 plus minus radical 16 over 12 because remember 256 minus 40 is 16 divided by 12. So that's a perfect square. So 16 plus minus 4 divided by 12. Split them, right? Remember? Because I need to get my roots. So my first is x equals 16 plus 4 over 12. 16 minus 4 over 12. So here, 16 plus 4 is 20 divided by 12. And if I simplify, it's 5 thirds. 5 divided by 3. The other one, 16 minus 4 is 12. And if I divide that by 12, that equals 1. So my roots are 1 comma 5 over 3. All right? All right, next, F. F. I told you we have a choice to do quadratic or do comparing the square, right? But I'm going to do comparing the square since the one on the bottom I'm going to use quadratic. So let's use comparing the square in this one, all right? So remember, to complete the square, to complete the square, I have to move the constant to the other side. So the 15 must travel to the right side. So that will become positive. So I have x squared plus 6x equals 15. Now I have to add, remember my b over 2 squared, and b here is 6, that's b. So that becomes 6 divided by 2 squared. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So that means that I have to add 9 in both sides of the equation. So, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 15 plus 9, okay? Plus 9 in both sides. 
this automatically becomes a perfect square trinomial. So bring down the x, bring down the plus, and half of 6 is 3. I'm going to square that, and 15 plus 9 is 24. Because I'm looking for my root, then I have to solve for x. So radical on both sides, and I will have left here x plus 3 equals plus minus radical 24. Minus 3, minus 3, all right? Then I'm going to continue here. And I have x equals negative 3 plus minus radical 24. I think so far we're good, right? Now remember, the 24 has to be simplified. And remember, we have to find the larger perfect square that divides 24. So that should be 4 times 6. The square root of 4 is 2. The 6 remains in the radical. So the roots are negative 3 plus minus 2 radical 6. So that will be in simplest radical form. And you also can write the question, your roots separate. Now remember, that might ask you to run the two numbers tenth, a hundreds, or thousands, and you have to just put it in the calculator. And the last one, all right, this is like a long video, but I'm learning that I have to pace myself down, you know, because sometimes I was too fast and I talk too fast, and then the poly guys get frustrated. But there we go. G. G as Gonzalez, okay, the best teacher. So for this one, we pick quadratic. Okay? But remember that was this was the one that I told you that you cannot use AC, so might as well just use quadratic. The only thing you have to predict was the zero. You don't want to use um Completing the square because this term here is not one. Okay, so the best the best shot is quadratic. So when you put it equal to zero, that means that the four travels to this side. You have to put the equation in standard form, so the positive four becomes negative. So you have your a, b, and c. And see, I already copied the formula above, all right? So I'm just gonna write it. Minus from the formula, b, which is negative three, plus minus radical negative three squared square minus four parenthesis two parenthesis negative four everything divided by two times two that becomes three positive plus minus nine plus 32 divided by four x equals three plus minus radical 41 over four and because this one is not a perfect square and it can be divided because that's a prime number, okay? So I would write my roots separate. Remember, this is correct, you know, but you have to become familiar with both ways, okay? So with this, guys, I think we like cover every single example that we did in um, factoring. Remember, four methods, factorization, uh, square root method, completing the square, and quadratic formula, okay? So guys, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful week, and you know, just be patient, stay home healthy, and please don't go out, take care of yourself, and believe it or not, guys, I miss you all. Have a good night.